I want to begin this video at the same place that we left off in the last one. In the last video, we looked at a computation expression that's defined at the bottom here called logger, and we executed these three statements. That's going to be important for this video, so if you haven't seen the previous one, please check that one out. But the conclusion was we could execute these statements and get them printed to the console without actually specifying a print statement within here. That was how we rationalized or justified the existence of these computation expressions, that they can sort of insert code for us. So just to see that this works the way we um, imagined it would, let me run it and we can see that we get these values printed to the console even though there's no explicit printout. And that's because the logging is contained up here in the logging builder and sort of kept away from the code. and I didn't go into any details whatsoever in the last video on how this is implemented or how it relates to whatever is down here. What I want to have a look at today is specifically this bind function here, because you can see that this bind function has a logging statement and some weird function application f on the value x. It's not clear what these parameters are at this stage, but nevertheless, this one seems to be integral right, to how we define this computation expression, because here is actually where we log the expression that we have. So let me replicate this functionality now and we're going to see what this bind function is all about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function of my own. First, I'm going to create a, a log function. So because, well, we had one up here. Actually, I can just copy this thing to down here, right? So we have some log function now. We just give it some value P and it prints that for us. Nice. What I'm going to define then is an insertion function like this. It's going to take two input arguments. The first one is going to be a value. And the second one is going to be a lambda function like that. And the body here of this function would be two simple function calls. First, it would be my or sorry, just log on the value that we provided. So we would log whatever value gets sent to this function in the first parameter. And this lambda is now a function, right? So what we would do in the next step is we would call the lambda and evaluate that on our value. Okay, still a bit mysterious what this insertion function actually is, but let me define an expression now that relies on this insertion function and we'll see why this relates to the computation expressions. What I can do is I can provide insertion and I can call that on a value three. So we're saying the value is three, which means we're going to log that here. And then we're going to send this value to some Lambda function, which is the next parameter that I need to define. And for this Lambda function, I'm going to say it's a function that takes one input parameter X and then does something. So the body of this, I'm going to define in a second here. But what you can see, if you look at this row is any value that we provide here is going to be sent into the Lambda function, right? We can see that in insertion here the value is passed to the lambda. And given that we named this parameter, the simple parameter here x, the value three here is getting bound to x. So we're binding the value three to x. Now, I'm using the word binding there for a reason. You can recall that this function here is called bind, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. So we have the value three, it, we're binding it to the x variable, and then we're going to implement the body here. And normally you would indent this and do some implementation here. But to make this statement that we're about to write, replicate this a bit more, I'm just going to neglect the indentation for now. And I'm going to define the body. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to call insertion again. Okay, but this time, the parameters we're going to give it are four, and another function, another lambda function of y that has some implementation that I'm going to define on the next row. Let me just collapse these two parentheses as well. Okay, you can see that we're starting to replicate this more and more. Now, you can see also that these are nested function calls, right? So we called insertion first, and then the parentheses associated with this is the out outer parentheses here. And then within the body, all of this is contained. So for the body of this one, which is also included in the body of this one, I'm going to call insertion again. Okay, this time, what I'm going to do is say the input argument here is x plus y. And the function that I provide for this is going to bind that to the value z. Okay, same story again. Now we need to provide the body here. I, I could actually define some value that we want to return. But given the fact that we returned a unit type here, let me just return a unit type as this function as well. Right? So okay, this looks very similar now to what we have up here, right? We have the first row x is bound to three. 
Here we have 3 and x, y and 4, y and 4, x plus y is z, x plus y is z. So we have something very close to the same thing as we saw up here, just that they're ordered in a different order, but that doesn't really matter so much. Now, if you would have seen this in your actual code, normally this would be indented, as I said before, so we would have something that looks more like this. That would be what you're more used to seeing. But in order to keep these two expressions similar, let's just put it like this for now. Let me actually execute this part, and we're going to see what happens when I do that. If I call this, you can see that the output here is the same as what I got up here previously. So this statement at the bottom here actually replicates whatever happens up here. And moreover, if we have a closer look at this insertion function that we defined before, it's very, very similar to the bind function. So you can see that the bind function takes an input parameter x and a function input f. And if I minimize this a little bit so we can see my insertion function as well, you can see that the input inputs here are pretty much equivalent, right? I named them different things. Here it's called f, here it's a lambda function, here it's x, here's value. But I mean, that aside, the implementation here is pretty much the same. First we log x, here we log the value, then we call the function on the value. So this insertion is really just a replica of the bind function. And the bind function, when we have these computation expressions, gets evaluated on each row here. So what the compiler does in the background is take this computation expression here and writes it on a form like this, with the bind function getting called in each step. So the bind function in these computation expressions is where you would define the piece of code that you want to inject in between each execution step of your computation expression. So you don't necessarily have to log anything, we just did that in our example now, but there could be something else that you do here instead. So I hope that makes it more clear what this bind function actually does. There's a lot more to, to cover when it comes to the uh, computation expressions in general. So we'll do that in the upcoming videos. But at least now I hope the conceptual understanding of what the bind function does is more clear.